The mighty Samson, Shimshon in Hebrew, was a judge who led and rescued the people of Israel from Philistine oppression. Historical Background After Moses' successor, Joshua, died, he was followed by a succession of Jewish leaders known as the Shoftim, or Judges. The Judges reigned for approximately 350 years, from 1245 to 890 BCE. Samson was the seventh judge and ruled his people for 20 years, 951 to 931 BCE. Samson's story is told in the book of Judges, chapter 13 to 16. And while little is known about his role as a leader of the Jews, the verses tell of his great strength in various skirmishes with the Philistines. Birth of a Leader Samson was born to his parents, Manoah and Zilphanes, from the tribe of Dan in their old age, after they had been childless for many years. An angel appeared to them one day in the small town of Zorah and declared that Zilphanes would give birth to a son who would grow up to save the Jews from the marauding Philistines. The angel told the couple that the boy was special and that he was to be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth for the rest of his life. He was not to consume any wine or other grape byproduct, and no razor was to ever touch his hair. Zilphanes eventually conceived and gave birth. Samson was named after the term Shemes Umagen, which means wall and protector, or the word Shemes, which means son. His name foreshadowed the man he would become, a mighty son who would protect and shield his people. Samson's Youth Samson possessed incredible physical strength, even as a child. A lion pounced on him one day while he was wandering through the woods. Samson slew the lion with his bare hands, feeling the spirit of God resting on him and strengthening him. Samson sought an opportunity to engage the Jews' enemy, the Philistines, after realizing he had been endowed with this strength to help his people. The Philistines were a nation of marauders living in the west of the Holy Land. They were constantly harassing and pillaging the Jews. For 40 years, the Jews suffered terribly under the heavy Philistine hand until, finally, Samson took a stand. The Wedding and the Riddle the first opportunity for him to confront the Philistines came when he arrived in Timna, a Philistine village, on one of his frequent wandering expeditions. He saw a Philistine maiden there and decided to take her as his wife. Despite his parents' objections, Samson decided to marry her. Judges 14, 1 through 10. Then Samson went down to Timna and saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. So he came back and told his father and mother, I saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, go get her for me as a wife. Then his father and his mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your relatives or among all our people that you go to take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she looks good to me. However, his father and mother did not know that it was the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. Now at that time the Philistines were ruling over Israel. Then Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came as far as the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion came roaring toward him, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, so that he tore him as one tears a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. But he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. So he went down and talked to the woman, and she looked good to Samson. When he returned later to take her, he turned aside to look at the carcass of the lion. 
and behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the body of the lion. So he scraped the honey into his hands and went on, eating as he went. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them, and they ate it. But he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey out of the body of the lion. Then his father went down to the woman, and Samson made a feast there, for the young men customarily did this. Samson saw an opportunity to put his plan into action at the wedding reception. He challenged 30 Philistine visitors to solve a riddle he would throw at them. If they guessed correctly, he would give them each a suit of clothes. If they did not, they would give him 30 suits. The Philistines concurred. Samson presented his riddle, to which the Philistines were unable to respond. Samson had passed the spot where he had killed the lion on his way to Timnah, and he noticed that a swarm of bees had turned the carcass into their hive. Samson took a spoonful of honey, ate it, and went on his way. As a result, he came up with the following riddle. Food came from an eater, and sweetness came from the strong. What exactly is it? The eater is a lion, the predator of predators, and the sweetness is honey. When the Philistines came to Samson on the seventh day, they asked, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? The Philistines approached Samson's bride, requesting a few days to come up with an answer. They threatened to burn down her father's house unless she coaxed an answer from her husband. Samson's wife persuaded him to tell her the answer to the riddle, which he did. When the Philistines came to Samson with the answer, he realized immediately what had happened. Samson left the city in rage and went to Ascalon, another Philistine town, where he killed 30 Philistines. Then he stripped them and sent their robes to the men who had won the wager. Revenge At the time of the wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife. He took a young goat with him. He said, I'm going to my wife's room. But her father would not let Samson go in. He said to Samson, I thought you really hated your wife, so I gave her to the best man from the wedding. Her younger sister is more beautiful. Take her. But Samson said to him, Now I have a good reason to hurt you Philistines. No one will blame me. So Samson went out and caught 300 foxes. He took two foxes at a time and tied their tails together. Then he tied a torch to the tails of each pair of foxes. Samson lit the torches. Then he let the foxes loose in the grain fields of the Philistines. In this way, he burned up their standing grain and the piles of grain. He also burned up the vineyards and the olive trees. The Philistines asked, Who did this? Someone told them, Samson, the son-in-law of the man from Timnah, did. He did this because his father-in-law gave his wife to his best man. So the Philistines burned Samson's wife and her father to death. Then Samson said to the Philistines, Since you did this, I will hurt you too. I won't stop until I pay you back. Samson attacked the Philistines and killed many of them. Then he went down and stayed in a cave. It was in the rock of Edom. Then the Philistines went up and camped in the land of Judah. They stopped near a place named Lehi. The men of Judah asked them, Why have you come here to fight us? They answered, We have come to take Samson our prisoner. We want to pay him back for what he did to our people. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the cave in the rock of Edom. They said to Samson, What have you done to us? Don't you know that the Philistines rule over us? Samson answered, I only paid them back for what they did to me. Then they said to him, We have come to tie you up. We will give you to the Philistines. Samson said to them, 
promise me you will not hurt me yourselves. The men from Judah said, We agree. We will just tie you up and give you to the Philistines. We will not kill you. So they tied Samson with two ropes. Then they led him up the cave in the rock. When Samson came to the place named Lehi, the Philistines came to meet him. They were shouting for joy. Then the Spirit of the Lord entered Samson and gave him great power. The ropes on him became weak like strings that had been burned. They fell off his hands. Samson found a jawbone of a donkey that had just died. He took it and killed 1,000 men with it. Then Samson said, With a donkey's jawbone I have made donkeys out of them. With a donkey's jawbone I have killed 1,000 men. When he finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, so that place was named ramath Lai. Samson was very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord. He said, I am your servant. You gave me this great victory. Do I have to die of thirst now? Do I have to be captured by people who are not circumcised? Then God opened up a hole in the ground at Lehi, and water came out. When Samson drank the water, he felt better. He felt strong again. So he named that spring Caller's Spring. It is still there in Lehi to this day. So Samson judged Israel for 20 years. That was in the days of the Philistines. Judges 15, 1 through 20. Remarkable Strength of Samson Many other stories about Samson's strength can be found in the Bible. When he wandered into Gaza, one of the major Philistine cities, one night his enemies surrounded the walls and barred the gates, intending to attack and slay him the next morning. One day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, At dawn we'll kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate. Together with the two posts, he tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Judges 16, 1 through 3. Delilah and Samson's Downfall. Samson's downfall ultimately came at the hands of another Philistine he married, Delilah. Judges 16, 4 through 21. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Sorek. The rulers of the Philistine went to her and said, Entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overpowered and tied up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what it would take to tie you up securely. Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried, I would become as weak as anyone else. So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings, and she tied Samson up with them. She had hidden some men in the inner rooms of her house, and she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snaps when it is burned by a fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. 
So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. The men were hiding in the inner room as before, and again Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. And Delilah said, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me, how can you be tied up securely? Samson replied, If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into a fabric on your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle, I would become as weak as anyone else. So, while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. Then she tightened it with the loom shuttle. Again she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson woke up, pulled back the loom shuttle, and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. Then Delilah pouted, How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as anyone else. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth So she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head on her lap, and then she called a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down, and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistine have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They took him to Gaza, where he was bound with bronze chains and forced to grind grain in the prison. Death of a Hero The Philistines gathered in Gaza's great hall for a great feast to celebrate their victory over Samson. They sang and danced in praise of their gods for delivering him into their hands. Then they summoned the blind Samson to amuse them. He was tormented and cruelly humiliated, and he couldn't stand their crude jokes and idol worship. Lead me to the pillars so that I may lean on them and rest for a minute he said to his guide. The youngster complied. Samson, enraged and in pain, prayed to God, Please, God, give me strength this time. Allow me to exact my vengeance on these cruel Philistines so that they may know that you are the only God. It doesn't matter if I die with them. Suddenly, he felt the presence of God in him again. Samson reached out his hands and tore down the pillars that supported the structure. The walls and roof collapsed in an instant, destroying the entire structure. The great crash killed every single Philistine, including Samson himself. Samson killed more Philistines on that day than he had in his entire life. His body was later returned home and buried on the land he had fought so valiantly to defend. For twenty years, Samson was the acknowledged judge of the people of Israel. In summary, the great Samson, Shimson in Hebrew, was a judge who led and rescued the Israelites from Philistine oppression. Samson, a Nazarite by birth, was endowed with Herculean strength by God, which he used to fight the Philistines who occupied the land of Israel. Samson ruled over the people for 20 years before being betrayed and captured by the Philistines. 
Samson's life ended when he knocked down the pillars, supporting the building he had been taken to, killing himself and thousands of Philistines inside, after being blinded and mocked by his captors. The story of Samson and Delilah teaches us many important lessons. Despite being born with incredible potential, Samson lost his life due to sin. The lesson for us is that the more we allow the glamour and allure of sin to influence us, the more blind we become. According to his extraordinary story, Samson was spiritually blind long before his eyes were gouged out. Judges 16.21 We must accept the fact that sin can infiltrate every aspect of our lives. We must understand that sin has a blinding and numbing effect on us. Otherwise, we'll be ensnared by it, just as Samson was. All sin, especially sexual sin, has dire and sometimes fatal consequences. Sin binds us, then blinds us, and finally grinds away at us slowly and inexorably. Judges 16.21 In reality, sin will lead us further than we intend. It will keep us for longer period of time than we intend to stay. In addition, sin will cost us more than we intend to pay. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life, the prophet warns. Proverbs 4.23 We discover that God can use both the wicked and the righteous to accomplish His will. We also learn that our own righteousness, or wickedness, will not prevent God from carrying out His will. Though God punishes wrongdoing, He has the option of delaying the punishment. Samson also reveals himself to be a shallow, vengeful man who pouted when things did not go his way. His references to, I have a right to retaliate, are particularly telling. Judges 15, 3, and 11. This was also the mindset of the Philistines. Judges 15, 10. It's eerily similar to today's worldview and contradicts Christ's teaching. Matthew 5.38 Despite all of Samson's flaws, he did repent and return to God before dying. Judges 16.28-30 In his sovereignty, God used Samson to accomplish his goal. In reality, Samson's death did much to thwart the Philistines' oppressive actions. Samson's destruction of Dagon's temple played a significant role in their defeat at Mitzvah by Samuel and the children of Israel some 100 years later. 1 Samuel 7, 7 through 14. Perhaps the most important lesson we learn is that God prefers to forgive rather than judge. In the end, God saw Samson as a man of faith. This is demonstrated by the fact that he is listed in the Hall of Faith, Hebrews 11.32. When we read through the list of names in the Hall of Faith, we discover that no one in the Hall of Faith was perfect. Samson was the strongest man who ever lived, but he owed his strength to God. More importantly, Samson allowed God to use him. In fact, God could have used him even if he hadn't made him the strongest man. He's willing to meet us right where we are and take us wherever he wants if we let him. James 4.8 Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded.